Peace, love, and light family. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, tuning in with a new reading. This book is called Submission is Not the Enemy, a Key Factor to a Healthy Relationship by, I hope I'm saying her name right, Sister Dunika Bell. She's known by D with the apostrophe Nika Marie on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, let me go ahead and share this real quick in one of my groups and then i'm gonna just go ahead and hop right into this honey share to a group the exchange okay so let me give a few disclaimers before i get started so hey brooke i found this is on youtube i don't know how but she um talks a lot about relationships and a lot of the viewpoints she get on men and women but a lot of them, uh, she kind of be talking about or to the sisters about how some of our actions affect relationships. Um, and I like that standpoint. I like when sisters call out other sisters because typically we don't respond well when men are trying to do it. So I appreciate when other sisters can speak up to other sisters about things that we can all work on. Um, but she also do address men on her channel. So that's one. Two, submission. Um, I do not necessarily look at it as a bad thing. I don't have the definition in front of me, but you got Google. You guys can look it up. Um, you know your thoughts on it, but I do feel like a lot of the times we take it out of context um, And we we think that it just means that the woman answers to every and anything that a man says and I don't think that that's the case I think there's a lot of vulnerability and trust that comes with submission and I also feel like maybe a better word um, to use in place uh, and relationships could be compatibility um, complimenting one another. That's what I think should be the main goal in relationships that we complement one another. So check this out. Um, my goal is to read the whole book. It's in big print. So I think I'll get through the whole thing. It might take about an hour or two, but I don't think it'll take that long. So let's hop into it. Submission is not the enemy, a key factor to a healthy relationship by Danica Bell. Let me put my phone back on the charger. Share this with a friend or on your page. It's, it is written by sister. All right, so here we go. Women's issues regarding submission. If you are a woman reading this book, you are more you more than likely view submission as this outdated, degrading, unnecessary, belittling term and practice that needs to be done away with forever. You most likely feel as though any woman that is in alliance with being submissive to her man slash husband is either insecure, desperate for love, or completely unaware of her value. Because I hear that a lot. When um, when the topics of polygamy and submission come up, a lot of women um, say that. that Well, she must be insecure or desperate or she don't love herself. In your mind, only a woman that does not respect herself and notice her power as a woman would ever submit to her man in any capacity. You view submissive women as weak and inferior that need to get a grip on reality because after all, no man is worth submitting to, not even your husband. Well, I'm here to tell you women that possess that mentality that you are absolutely wrong and that's probably the reason why your relationships up to this point are either failing or have failed miserably. You don't realize that submissive women are not only the women that are being sought after by high caliber men, but that submissive women understand the power in being submissive. Submission is a powerful key component to a healthy relationship. It gives structure and balance to our unions by stripping away the power struggle and giving each other the opportunity to take direction and give direction respectfully and effectively. Let me read that sentence again. It gives structure and balance to our unions by stripping away the power struggle and giving each other the opportunity to take direction and give direction respectfully and effectively. The problem is that many of us have the wrong idea of what submission is supposed to be in regards to a relationship or we practice submission entirely wrong. Submission is not intended to be this competitive, dictator type of dynamic, but rather a beautiful and harmonic dance between a couple and a strong, loving, health, healthy, beautiful union. A woman being submissive to her man shows that she understands his needs, loves him, and most importantly, trusts him to lead, teach, and guide her in the right direction. The issue comes into place 
when this dance that's supposed to be harmonic and beautiful turns into a battle of the sexes where where one where one wants to be the controller and rule over the other party uh, <clears throat> excuse me i don't think i mentioned this at the beginning but sis is married because i know a lot of time people want to uh, fact check people that write stuff about this so she is married and she even said on one of her videos that um, he helps her afford the lifestyle that she is able to have because of her submissiveness. I like how she spoke about the balance and harmony and um, compared it to a dance because, you know, you have not one person can lead and dance. It has to. Okay. Um, the issue comes into place. Okay, let me back up. A woman being submissive to her man shows that she understands his needs, loves him, and most importantly, trusts him to lead teach and guide her in the right direction the issue comes into place when this dance that's supposed to be harmonic and beautiful turns into a battle of the sexes where one wants to be the controller and rule over the other party when this becomes the objective the relationship is not healthy and is not displaying what submission is supposed to embody submission should not feel nor be forceful and degrading it should feel and be effortless harmonic and complementary there go that word now, I know you are probably sitting there with your face frowned up thinking to yourself, does this chick even know the definition of submission? Because what she is describing is not that. In fact, you probably went to Google to back up your claim and saw the definition of submission, of submission as, one, the action or act of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. The word that probably stuck out immediately to you was superior which left a bad taste in your mouth, further stating your claim of how I'm a looney tune that does not know that submission is a degrading thing in and of itself. But what if I told you that that's essentially what we have to do in our relationships in order to bring balance, structure, and order? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that a man is more valuable, important, and has complete control over his woman, or vice versa. But I do feel as though we should be regarding each other in certain ways when it comes to our relationships, giving each other permission to take the lead when it better suits them without resistance. Okay, for example, um, I know a sister that stated that she was really good at finances and her partner wasn't. So when it came to that relationship, instead of him handling all the bills and all the money, he let her do that because that was her strong point. So... You know, when it comes to that, I think, ladies, when there are certain things that your partner is better at, instead of you taking offense or whatever it is that you do, you just allow him to lead in that area. That's his strength. That's his strong point. That's because it's a partnership, right? It's not about you getting your way all the time and all your rules being followed. It's a two-way street. So I like that. So giving permission to take the lead when it better suits them with resistance. Submission in regards to a relationship should reflect a man and a woman being able to take the lead. Okay, I think it froze up. Let me back up. Hold on. Submission in regards to a relationship should reflect a man and woman being able to take the lead and follow when need be while respecting each other's roles and position in their relationship. Any couple in a loving, healthy, strong, lasting relationship or marriage knows and understands that submission is not to be taken as a man being toxic and degrading to his woman and making her feel as if she is not valuable and beneath him. Nor should a woman be doing this to her man. Instead, it is to be seen as a woman being able to cater to, follow the lead of, and go with the flow of a man of true value and substance that truly embodies what it is to be a leader, teacher, nurturer, provider, and protector. Now, I know you have a problem with the definition of submission listed previously. For those that just joined, I'm going to go back and read uh, the definition because she said, uh, she said, I know you're sitting there with your face frowned up and you probably went to Google and the first definition was, so the definition that's on Google says, the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. Okay, now I know you have a problem with the definition of submission listed previously, but let's go back and see how it can be applied to our relationships. Being able to be accepting and yielding to the suggestions or requests from your significant other is a great quality that one can possess. 
how toxic and dysfunctional would our relationships and marriages be if we met every request and every suggestion from our partner with resistance and force and never was accepting or yielding to what they had to say? It would lead to constant clashing and arguments and nothing would ever get accomplished. Thus, there is no need for us to feel that just because we are being receptive, understanding, doing what our partner would like from us or what they may deem to be something of great value or benefit for us to do somehow makes us weak and inferior. In fact, it not only makes our relationship stronger, but it also makes our partner more loving and appreciative of us and in turn makes them want to reciprocate and pour back into us. This is where that beautiful and harmonic dance that I keep referring to man itself, it manifests itself into our relationship. When a man feels as though his woman respects, honors, and obliges to him. Uh-oh, look at that word, oblige. When a man feels as though his woman respects, honors, and obliges to him, this creates a deeper and more loving connection that he has for his woman. This plays into his masculinity and gives him more sense of responsibility because he knows that he has a woman that trusts him and that is relying on him to make the right judgment calls. The only issue with submission is when a woman is trusting, yielding to, accepting, loving, and catering to the wrong man. What type of man should be submitted to? Ladies, I'm here to let you all know that submission is not the enemy in your relationship. The enemy of your relationship is the quality of the man you are choosing to be submissive towards. You cannot be submissive towards toxic, deadbeat men, then get upset when things start to crumble due to feeling weak, used, and taken for granted. Before we give submissive qualities to a man, he must first show and prove to us his value. We cannot just be submissive to a man simply because he is a male that we, we cannot be, we cannot just be submissive to a man simply because he is a male that we just so happen to be with. In fact, if he is a man that is not worthy of submission, we shouldn't be with him, entertain him, or give him our time, energy, and attention in the first place. The qualities a man possesses in order to deem him worthy enough of a relationship, let alone submission, consist of leadership trustworthiness, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, strength, power, nurturing, providing, protecting, teaching, self-discipline, good work ethic, organization, faithfulness, love, compassion, dominance, authority, intelligence, etc. If a man does not have these qualities, he should not even be entertained. Too often, us women jump into relationships with men based on his potential to embody certain characteristics versus what he is actively showing and proving to us. This is a setup for failure and disappointment because that man very well may never become the man that you need for him to be or embody the characteristics that a true leader, provider, and protector are supposed to have. As women, we must be wise enough to know and understand that all men are not the same and to stop boxing them all in due to the poor treatment of the men that we were once involved with. If you were previously in a relationship with a man that treated you badly, that you just so happened to be submissive to, the problem was not the act of being submissive. The problem was that poor quality man that you made the poor decision to be involved with in that way. And you must understand that poor quality man or men do not represent the whole. Thus, it is foolish and unwise to say that no man should be submitted to based upon the immature and hurtful actions of a handful from your past. I've heard the many arguments of women that feel that submission is a dangerous and foolish game to play. Many of them have valid points, but completely negate the fact that those men that it may be dangerous and foolish to submit to were low vibrational men that did not have the above mentioned qualities in the first place. If a man is being overly possessive, toxic, demeaning, controlling, or abusive in any way, shape, or form, he does not deserve the luxury of having a woman that is nurturing, loving, catering, or submissive to him because he will do nothing but abuse it and use it against her. This is why it is very important for women to know who is worthy enough to be submissive to. Why we have problems with submission. Growing up, many of us women, especially black women, have never been exposed to a healthy relationship between men and women. In most instances, the male figure is completely absent or is present but does not showcase the leadership, provider, and protector role. This hinders women from being able to truly understand what position a man must play in their lives as women and what traits a man must possess in order to be in their lives in the first place. 
Thus, we grow up thinking that the low-quality men are the ones that we are supposed to be involved with romantically and raise our families with because those are the types of men that we were exposed to. This leads women into an even bigger issue of feeling the need to be the leaders, providers, and protectors of their households and families because the men they were exposed to were not handling their duties and obligations as men. This may force a lot of women into a more dominating role that they do not want to get out of because deep down inside, they do not trust their men to handle their responsibilities, make the right decisions, and lead them in the right direction. Due to this, many women may start to treat men like children or warp our minds into being submissive to weak-minded men that cannot lead us. That brings me to the men. Men suffer from the same type of dilemma, only they are trying to emulate what they see and don't see from the men around them. Growing up, many men, especially black men, are constantly seeing men that are absent from the household or they see men treating and or talking to women in disrespectful and degrading manners. They then internalize that and believe this to be okay. This introduces into the young male's mind that it is fine for men to be absent and uninvolved with their families and to be weak or disrespectful towards women. Young men are not being shown or taught how to have leadership, provider, and protector type qualities from their poor upbringings and are also being exposed to mothers and other female family members playing a more powerful role which can also add more confusion to the males as far as their position in a male and female relationship. Men and women are not on the same accord when it comes to the roles of what a man and a woman are supposed to demonstrate. This puts us at odds and makes us feel that we are in constant competition with one another and not compatible with one another. Men and women feeling the need to constantly compete and defeat each other makes it extremely difficult for us to understand one another and build upon solid, loving foundations. We need to go back to the drawing board and figure out the rules and standards need figure out the rules and standards needed to I think it might be a topo figure out what the rules and standards need to consist of okay we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what the rules and standards need to consist of for both men and women to collaborate effectively in a healthy relationship we can no longer continue on with the destructive and divisive ways and actions of men against women and vice versa men with the wrong idea about submission so often I hear toxic men talk about how women are beneath men and how women are supposed to obey and bow down to men no matter what that man does or doesn't do for that woman. They don't understand that a man is supposed to take care of, provide, protect, nurture, and respect women in order to have a woman that treats him with respect and decency. Some men also, well dang, I mean I feel like well, we should respect men with you know, respect and decency whether they doing all that for us or not, but... I guess what she's saying as far as your relationship goes. They don't understand that a man is supposed to take care of, provide, protect, nurture, and respect women in order to have a woman that treats him with respect and decency. Some men also don't understand that their view towards women are very degrading and surface level, which all assists in women feeling as though submission to men in any capacity is counterproductive. However, if there were both men and women to state and show that men and women are designed to love, respect, cater to, nurture, and work with one another as a team, a lot within our relationships could be resolved and repaired. See, submission is a collaborative effort by both the man and a woman involved in the relationship. Submission is not something that is automatically granted to someone just because of their gender or position in one's life. It has to be earned based upon respect and love. When a man shows that he loves, respects, honors, and takes care of his woman, this will make his woman feel appreciated and valued. In return, that woman would want to be submissive and nurturing towards him. However, when a man is disrespectful, degrading, and or does not possess leadership-type qualities, this makes a woman feel as though he is not to submit to. While submission is oftentimes regarded for women, there are times and places where men are to be more submissive to their woman, to their women. Many men don't like to acknowledge this aspect of a relationship because it makes him feel inadequate or as though his masculinity is being stripped from him. That sentiment, however, couldn't be any further from the truth. The reality is there will be times in the relationship where a man would need for his woman to take the lead on situations where she may be 
where where maybe she is stronger suited than he and he will need for her to guide him in the right direction there will also be times where the man must cater to and be more nurturing to his woman when the time calls for it and he should not be reluctant to do so just as it should not be regarded as somehow weak, inferior, or degrading for women to be submissive to a good, quality man, men should not be considered to be any of those things in regard to good, quality women. Relationships are all about balance, and we should not be afraid to balance each other out by taking on certain roles at certain times. Although one may play a role more often than the other, this still is a part of duality and a nice, healthy balance between men and women. It's important for me to also point out that there should be no instance where both the man and woman are being submissive or dominant towards one another at the same time, as both of these things would result in non-progressive behaviors and situations. If both the man and woman are being submissive to one another simultaneously, no one would know when to take charge and be protect proactive, resulting in stagnation and confusion. On the opposite end, if the man and the woman are being dominant towards one another simultaneously, there will be a battle, which would lead to confrontation and friction, ultimately leading to a breakup. This is why it is very important for us to have a clear and concise understanding as far as balancing our relationships to eliminate as much confusion and counterproductive behavior as possible. Establishing roles in the relationship. Now, I do personally feel as though the man should be in the more dominant role in the relationship majority of the time because by nature, I feel that is the role that is designated for him. A man by nature is a leader, provider, and protector, and by him being in this natural role slash element, this will do nothing but bring forth the best attributes of his masculinity. Men being able to fully embrace and tap into their masculinity will result into women being able to fall in line by her tapping into and embracing her femininity, which will bring harmony and balance to the male and female interaction and exchange. A man must embody someone that has control and is able to take care of his household and family, which yet again will make his female counterpart file, fall in line by helping him to maintain the household and family and being of assistance. This dynamic gives a man a sense of power and purpose, which gives a need for that man in a woman's life. Women would then see that the man is providing her with love, stability, protection, comfort, and other things of that nature, which will give a woman a greater incentive to be submissive and make sure that she is taking care of the man that is taking care of her. However, a man cannot abuse his power and his authority over his woman, or this will make her want to rebel against him and or leave. This is why respect and order in the relationship is greatly needed. Neither the man nor the woman should feel degraded, small, unimportant, and undervalued in the relationship. Both the man and the woman should know that both of their positions are important and necessary for the relationship to thrive, grow, and evolve. When roles are established and the understanding and respect of the roles are made clear, this will eliminate any competition, confusion, or power trips. I know that there will be many independent women that don't need a man and plenty of weak-minded 50-50 beta males that will have a problem with what I said as far as the structure of how the relationship should be with the man being the provider and the woman being of assistance to him. But those of us that truly want healthy, long-lasting, peaceful relationships with order to them know and understand that this is a way to achieve such a dynamic. Men need to be in their natural roles as protectors and providers so that they can be the best versions of their masculine selves. And women need to be in the nurturing, supportive role to really be more in tune with their feminine selves. Hold on. With this setup, there will be hardly any friction, confrontation, or competition between the man and the woman in the relationship because both parties will be in alignment with nature. Confrontation, friction, or competition only results when you have both the man and the woman competing for the same position within the relationship, making it much more complicated to collaborate in a loving and effective manner. Now, there are plenty of couples out there that feel as though being in a 50-50 relationship as far as the roles, duties, and responsibilities are concerned is the better option because it gives both parties equality in the relationship. 
And while I can understand and respect this attempt at duality, you must know that this setup most times still contributes to the battle of the sexes where no one wants to truly and fully cater or submit. How? Well, because in the 50-50 setup, everybody feels entitled to get their way due to having equal skin in the game, thus making them feel like, why should I cater to you when I do the same things that you do? So, if you are a 50-50 type of guy that is looking for a woman to submit and cater to you, you must know that it will never happen to the extent that you would like because she will see you as her helpmate and not someone that is carrying the kingdom. On the other hand, if you are a 50-50 type of woman, you will never truly feel your most feminine self because in this dynamic, you are playing a masculine role of also being the provider and protector, which may lead to you feeling as though your man is not really is really not that much deserving of you being the submissive, more nurturing type. Your man may also stop viewing you as a more feminine being and not treat you with the more tender love and care that you naturally need due to him seeing you in that more masculine position on a subconscious level. Again, I do feel as though the male should play the more masculine role or the provider and protector and the woman should play the more submissive, catering role in the relationship. Neither party should feel somehow disrespected, overwhelmed, or offended for the positions that they play for a majority or some of the time. A woman should have no problem with her man taking on the more dominant role for majority of the time because she should know and understand that this is the role that is better fit for him naturally and should never challenge this position. If ever a woman has a problem with her man taking on the more dominant role in the relationship of that as a leader, provider, and protector, this speaks more about her character and judgment than anything else. Why? Because it would showcase that she either does not know how to choose a trustworthy man that has such capabilities to take care of and guide her and her family in the right direction, or that she has a misguided or toxic way of dealing with or viewing the less dominant, more submissive role in a relationship. Many women don't know and understand that it takes a lot of wisdom, love, trust, and strength to be submissive in the first place. It requires one to use their better judgment to be able to differentiate between who is a weak leader and who is a wise and strong leader to be submissive towards. This is not a job for the faint of heart and unwise. Being faint of heart and unwise will lead to a woman being weak and or choosing a man that is not fit to take care of her and her family in the healthiest way possible. Only a true queen knows how to scope out a king that is worthy and wise enough to take control and build so that she can fall into her natural role and position of a queen and be able to effectively cater to the king of her castle, take care of the castle and the family. While this does not relieve the man of his duties to be there for and take care of his castle and family, it does make it a lot easier for him to do. And while the man is taking care of the providing and protecting areas of the relationship, it does not relieve the woman of her obligations to contribute as well. It only makes it a lot easier for her to do and manage. See, I'm not opposed to a woman being able to add to the pot that her man already was has cooking. I understand that we live in a day and age where both the man and woman enjoy being able to work and make their own monetary contributions to the relationship. However, the fact remains that this should primarily be the main be the man's territory and focus whatever the woman is able to scrap scramble up to bring home should only be a bonus and go towards saving investing and other miscellaneous things that the couple agrees is feasible and reasonable to do it should never be a woman's job permanently slash primarily to provide for the household that is the job of the man slash king of the castle on the other hand the man should not solely leave the raising of the children or the upkeep of the house on the woman while it is the woman's role primarily, a man should still be involved. The main objective is to lighten each other's loads by playing our own natural positions and not competing and stepping on one another's toes. Men and women should always operate from a place of love, balance, patience, and understanding. Never should there be an instance where one feels unneeded, undervalued, unappreciated, and out of place. A man should always feel as though his home is his sanctuary and his woman is his peace. Just as a woman should always feel as though her man is her protector, provider, and her safe haven. We can both do this by showing one another respect and appreciation for our contributions to the relationship instead of throwing in one's face our importance and their shortcomings. In a perfect world, men and women would have no issues with showing one another gratitude for one's roles and not belittling one another in attempts to make ourselves feel important. 
Unfortunately, we live in a world where that is not the case. I believe it has become the norm for men and women to be at odds with one another because we have gotten out of alignment with the natural order of things and live in a world that is more competitive than compliment complementary. This competitive behavior and energy that we all have in attempts to adapt with the world and society around us has now trickled over into our relationships and make us to be the combative and demeaning towards the people we are supposed to be loving and building with. In our everyday lives, we are surrounded by a world where we have to be cutthroat and overpowering in order to get ahead, and it bleeds over into our home life and relationships. It has become so embedded into us that we don't know how, to, how or when to turn it off. Your marriage and relationship is never the place to try to destroy, divide, overpower, and conquer. It's a place where you should come together and unite as one unit and leave that competitive nature for the outside world. The bottom line is, we lack an understanding of each other as far as men and women, and we need to understand that we are made to complement each other and build, not compete with one another and destroy. Child that book at i must have put it on my other shelf this falls into line with that book i was reading complementarity yes i agree with that wholeheartedly we're supposed to complement each other we shouldn't be bringing all this drama to the house that should be our one place we go to that's peaceful that is not how the outside world treating us i agree with that men's issue with finding submissive women so many men come to me feeling like everything as far as building with a woman or finding a feminine woman to build with is a lost cause. They feel as though women that are feminine, loving, supportive, and submissive no longer exist in today's society. This is due largely in part to social media and the social climate in general that is teaching women that in order for her to be a boss chick, she must adopt the same toxic and destructive qualities of the men that she is trying so desperately to avoid. These qualities consist of being, the name of this book is called Submission is Not the Enemy, a Key Factor to a Healthy Relationship. The title is also on this live. I think if you click somewhere, you'll see it. You can copy and paste it from the live. These qualities consist of being degrading, placing themselves on pedestals, becoming overly self-centered and selfish, and neglecting everybody else's thoughts, feelings, and emotions that don't feed into their egos. Let me read that again because I see this all the time on the internet too. Um, so they feel that uh, these women no longer exist this is due largely in part to social media and the social climate in general that is teaching women that in order for her to be a boss chick she must adopt the same toxic excuse me and destructive qualities of the men that she is trying so desperately to avoid these qualities consist of being degrading placing themselves on pedestals, becoming overly self-centered and selfish and neglecting everyone else's uh, thoughts, feelings, and emotions that don't feed into their egos. With this type of attitude that is possessed by the, with this type of attitude that is possessed by a majority of women, it makes it extremely difficult for men to become romantically involved, let alone approach a woman. The reality is there are a lot of women that don't desire to be in relationships where they are not in the dominant role. Let's pause right there for a second. I didn't want to interject too much opinion because I wanted to read through and we're almost done. It's, it's written in big print, so I'm almost done. Um, I like that. Uh, what's she say? That there, the reality is there are a lot of women that don't desire to be in relationships where they are not in the dominant role. And so that's really the only objection that I'm hearing when women saying, oh, um, I ain't going to be submissive and this and that. So she's already saying, uh, for those just tuning in, she's already basically saying that, like, even based on the definition of, um, you know, yielding and all this and this and that, shouldn't you yield and listen to somebody in your that you're in a relationship? Um, uh, I lost my train of thought that quick. Oh, and then another women are saying, well, you know, I don't want to do this and this and that, but it's like they want to be the ones that do that in a relationship. So you don't want a man to do it to you, but you want the power and control in the relationship. So it's like, it's okay if you have it, but it's not okay if the man has it. And so I like how she talks about it from like a, it's a balance standpoint. If he's the man, this is his strong point, and this is, she feels that the men is their job to protect, provide, and all of that, then we are more inclined to be more submissive and be more in our feminine self, which does not negate him from the role of doing certain things that, that the woman is doing and it does not negate her from doing some of the things that the man is doing but if they're each focused in their where in their strong points 
then it, it meshes well. And there's really no argument about being submissive. Um, but I think that's really the biggest objection is just that the woman wants to be in the dominant role. Like, I want to be able to call the shots. You just don't want the man doing it for whatever reason. Maybe they feel more empowered or they feel less empowered when a man is doing it. But I believe that's also, like she mentioned, when we're trying to be submissive to these low-quality men. When you get these men that do not have their shit together, that's you You can't trust them to lead. Then them the type of men you don't need to be with. Because when you're with a man that got it going on and he can make decisions and he's smart and he can just make shit go, that shit make you wet and it make you want to act right. Okay. The reality is there are a lot of women that don't desire to be in relationships where they are not in the dominant role. They want to be the providers, the breadwinners, and the kings. And I don't even think they want to. It's just society and how, how it operates. And half of us already be having kids when we meet these men. So it's like we got to do these things, you know, or else who else going to do it? You know, I got to take care of me and mine. So I get the mentality, but also those women especially deserve to need to be able to sit back and let a man come and and do what he's strong at so that she can have a break. We be actually doing too damn much. Don't y'all want to relax a little? If they want to work and do all this shit, let them. That don't mean, submission don't mean you can't still be doing your own thing. Like she said, uh, you can still be having money and putting it in the pot. You know, we live in a time where people want to have jobs and, and want to do for themselves. But if you pick a man that you feel is trustworthy and can handle certain things, then you could be stacking your dough. And if things do go awry, you still... We'll be well on your own because you've been saving the whole time. Come on now. We got to learn how to work the system. They want to be the providers, the breadwinners, and the kings. Anything other than that, they view as weak or inferior, and that's the last thing a damaged woman wants to feel. Thus, they look for subpar men that they can control so they can feel empowered and needed. I don't want a simp. I don't want a man I can run over, period. Seen it? The women in my family had them. That's all I grew up around with simp-ass men, and I don't want one. This is a dangerous game to play. Little do many of these women know is that one day that subpar control man will begin to feel emasculated and leave her for a woman that holds him in a higher regard. Men need to feel needed. And once he does not feel that, it's only a matter of time before he strays away. We can talk about needs today on my page. Um, and I was saying that, like, I don't want to feel needed by a man. Like, I want you to be able to survive if I'm not around. Like, I want you to still make it and vice versa i want to be able to, i want to be in love with my boo but if something happened he become paralyzed or disabled or die i don't want to be so distraught that my world ends and i'm in shambles and i'm an alcoholic and my kids go to the system and i'm homeless on the street because i need him that bad but on the flip side i think as humans we all need each other if one of if it was just one of us born or we it was one of us in the four corners of the earth we wouldn't survive alone i feel like we need human interaction to survive but um, I do feel like men need to feel needed in the sense of, like she's saying, they're protectors, they're providers. So I even have uh, friends that are um, doing pretty, I have one guy that's doing pretty well for himself. He's in real estate. He can purchase cars, got his own home. Like he's doing really well. I have another friend that he's working his way up to that, but he's still on the floor of doing what he wants. But both of these men have made comments about, you know, either I'm not in the place that I want to be. Or, and that's why they're not really focused on relationships or the other one that's doing well. It's like, what am I doing all this for if I don't have nobody to share with? So it's like, um, they need to feel needed. Like I can do all these things and be great, but if nobody needs me or, you know what I'm saying? So I just think that's something that is wired into men. I do feel like they need, and I really feel like low key, they couldn't make it without us. Like, I mean, there are men that are bachelors, but they still be dependent on women for, you know, their pleasure, for company. I know some men that call women over to cook and clean for them may or may not be giving them the D. But I feel like, you know, not to say that that's, that should be a woman's role, but some of them know that they need it. They know they're just not as tidy or don't have the patience or whatever it is. They need that feminine energy. They need that role in their life. So I can I can understand where she's coming from with that. Men need to feel needed. And once he does not feel that, it's only a matter of time before he strays away. Taking care of a man and treating him like your son goes against the natural laws of nature and eats away at his masculinity. Real men need to be providers and protectors in order to feel like he is fulfilling his purpose in life. Even if at one time he felt as if this setup of having his woman play the more masculine role was fine, he will eventually wake up from his slumber and begin to feel inadequate and either start to question his importance, cheat, or leave. 
Now, there are many instances where men are comfortable with their woman playing the dominant role and taking care of him. Most of these men that feel this way, however, have not yet fully grown into their manliness and have not witnessed a true masculine alpha male in action. I agree with this. They probably grew up in a single mother household where they have grown accustomed to having women take care of and coddle them. But women must understand that these men will never make her feel her true feminine self. And they won't. They will stress out how they will stress you out. You will be feeling so oh my God. When I had them, I was still um I was still working. Sometimes they couldn't um uh, pay half of their rent. Um it was just, it, it really felt like I was raising, I, like I had a grown male child. Um, I had to ask, consistently ask them to do certain things that should have just been done, um, including cleaning the space most of the time that they were in while I was working. And that was their own space, creating their own mess, and it was just piling up. Like, it's not fun. Um, but I do, I, I agree with that. I also see the pattern. I posted the status not too long ago about have you noticed that men that grew up around mostly women have no issue with like you know calling on women and asking or depending on women for things and i do think that that's a pattern because that's all they know if you grow up around mostly women you don't see any any type of strong masculine men in your life then all you know is that women are there for you so if you need a place to stay or somebody's car to drive or somebody to fill out your job application or whatever it is that you need you just think to go to a woman and do it because that's all you know and that's all that's what's been accepted for you. And then, especially when women don't really know they self or they see the potential in you, they'll take you in and without realizing that you're going to end up being a leech to hope that, you know, they can help you get to the place that you need to get to and you never do because you're just so dependent on her because that's all you know and that's what you expect. So, I've seen it, dealt with it, don't like it. Um, Yeah, and she'll never feel like her full feminine self with a man like that around because you always gonna feel like you having to do the work and he can't never contribute women subconsciously or even consciously need to be and feel provided for and protected by their man when they do not they will feel this constant void or emptiness within their relationship which may also cause her to seek it outside of the relationship or belittle the man that she's with because she will view him as less than this is why men should never be content with their woman taking on the role of provider and protector because it is unnatural to who and what she is, which will cause her to act other than her true feminine self. Real feminine women, no matter how strong or powerful she is, knows that her true strength and power is in her ability to nurture and be of assistance to a strong, dominant, intelligent man. She knows that finding a man that is fit to take care of her and be the one in control helps to free up her time to take care of not only herself, but ultimately her household and her man. When both parties are taken care of what they need to take care of, they are both put at ease and much happier within their relationship. Men need to try their best to stay and be in a dominant and powerful position. This gives you necessity purpose and dignity as a man women that are submissive nurturing and of great support will naturally be attracted to you because she will see you as a leader provider and protector which makes you an asset to her when your woman views you as an asset she will do whatever it is in her power to keep you satisfied which mostly requires her to be submissive as you can see submission goes back to balance and reciprocation no one is indicating i mean excuse me no one is dictating or ruling over someone else out of force but rather giving out love understanding and appreciation bridging the gap of confusion there's many men and women that want or require certain things in relationships but fail to realize this balance and reciprocal element that i have mentioned which does nothing but make them become even more bitter angry or discouraged when it comes to building solid relationships so many times I hear men say things like, I need a submissive woman that will listen to me and cater to me. All the while, he is not a provider, protector, leader, or nurturer in any capacity. Then there's those women that say, I need a man that can spoil me and take care of me. All the while, she is doing nothing that's even remotely deserving of such treatment. We cannot be out here having these high expectations and demands for what we want and need from a significant other when we ourselves are not ready and willing to step up and do what is required to attract and get that type of individual to build with. If we want something, we must first showcase our significance and worthiness. Otherwise, you will continue to run into situation after situation where you feel like you are not getting the type of man or woman that you need. I agree. 
The irony of building solid relationships is the fact that it always goes back to self. We must work on who we are as individuals first so that we know exactly what type of person we are in our rawest form. Once we do this, we will learn our strengths and weaknesses and be able to effectively build on the things that are good quality attributes and destroy whatever is not conducive to our growth and well-being. Working on yourself and seeing who you are, even the ugly parts, will help you to be able to completely will help you to be completely honest with yourself so that you can really put in the necessary work to become the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. You will then start to attract the right person that you desire. Let me pause right there for a second. I really agree with that part. So, that's why I always say, did you wake up, stretch, uh, drink water, uh, Gary Simone, you coming in at the end, boo. I'm about to be wrapping it up. It's all good, though. Um, that's why I said, did you wake up, stretch, drink water, do your affirmations, talk to God, go in nature, whatever you need to do. Because um, what I've learned, I, um, you know, I was reading to you guys a book called Man Leads by this sister who runs a wife school and mentoring program and all this and that. And that's kind of where I got my first epiphanies of even what um, emasculating a man was. I didn't really get a concept of gender roles um, until that. But I did learn that you really got to do self-work. You really got to do self-work in anything. Um, when I was in network marketing, one of the main things they have you do is start reading a lot of personal development books. So what I've noticed in my lifetime is just that the key to success, to achieving, you know, the best things that are, are best for us in life starts with working on self. Um, and once you can be accountable to yourself, once you can acknowledge um you know, areas that you falter or need more discipline and stuff in, it becomes easier to be able to work on that. And then it also makes it a little easier in uh, the type of people that you draw into your life. Because when you're not really focused on self and you just allow any and everything, then that's the type of energies that you're around and you end up mixing and dealing with them. And you have to have those experiences to learn like, oh, and I, oh, this is not what I foresaw myself being in. And so then you elevate from there and then you start doing better and better and better. But you always, it's a continuous cycle. It's not easy. It's not overnight. But if you do it daily, if you if you practice in daily uh, to tune in and, and understand yourself, it makes it a lot easier. And I could just see the total 360 that I've been on. And even, I would say even to say the past year, hell, even the, the first seven months of this year, I've seen the complete switch and how my mindset was when, um, when I neglected that time with me um, versus how intentional I am with it now and the type of people that I draw now and the relationships that I deal with now. They're so much more fruitful. And I don't even have a desire or feel a need to entertain these re these relationships or situationships that um, are not fulfilling. When I had less value, wasn't as tuned in, was just bored and lonely and wanted attention and wanted to be around, I would put up with things that I knew didn't serve me. But now it's just like it's such a turn off to me. I'm good. I can wait. It's not. I'm not pressed. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then the ones that are, the relationships in my life that are good, they're good. Like, they're good. So, uh, the key, though, let me read the last sentence. Uh, working on yourself and seeing who you are, even the ugly parts, will help you to be able to be completely honest with yourself so that you can really put in the necessary work to become the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. You will then start to attract the right person to you that you desire. The key, though, is not to only work on yourself just to get someone that you are interested in, as this will lead you to not completely and fully dedicating yourself to true self-improvement and elevation. You will instead start to slack off and stop the self-elevation once you feel like you won the prize. You must work on yourself for the true purpose of self-elevation and improvement so that you can attract and accept authentic people into your life that you know are good for you. When you have true self-awareness and enlightenment, it will be hard for anybody to just come into your life and knock you off your focus. Why? Because you know yourself enough to understand who is phony, fake, fraud, or user. When you are truly on the journey to self-improvement, everything and everybody around you will reflect that for the most part. In addition to that, when you are only faking the funk or working on yourself to get someone, they may very well see through your act and get turned off and leave you anyway. All right, here we go, the brutal truth. When I tell women things like, you can very well get a man that loves you, respects you, takes care of you, and caters to you, but you have to be a kind, loving, supportive, submissive woman to obtain that kind of man. Their mouths automatically scrunch up and their eyes roll in the back of their heads because they have not been told the truth. 
They have instead been lied to by other women that have not done their own self-work and so that they can be the king, the kingly, independent, strong, dominant, and aggressive women, uh, an aggressive woman and get whatever man she so desires. This leads them to think that there is no self-work to be done and women that think, think like me are dumb, desperate, and foolish when in all actuality it's the women like them that are going to be forever searching for a man that does not want her. Um, I like, okay. So now I know some of the kingly, independent, strong, dominant, and aggressive women. Um, and some of their argument is, well, you know, well, they going to love me for who I am and this and that. And granted, some will. And there are some men that I know that are like, you know, I like a woman with a little spice, with a little attitude, with a little keep me on my toes type um, energy. And I think that goes back to the part where she was saying like, but they're still never going to feel their full feminine selves because the type of men that um, go for that are probably the type of men that can get ran over um, because she is all these things already and they just allow it. And yeah, so, all right. Let's see. La, 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 la. This leads them to think that there is no self-work to be done and women that think like me are dumb, desperate, and foolish when in all actuality it's the women like them that are going to be forever searching for a man that does not want her. A man that is going to be taking care of you, loving you, catering to you, and so forth is going to expect certain things in return. One of the most common things that kind of man is going to expect is submission from his woman. That kind of man is not going to tolerate for too long a woman that is combative, competitive, stubborn, and controlling. He needs a woman that is teachable, understanding, nurturing, and able to take direction. Any woman that feels otherwise must be dealing with weak-minded or weak-spirited type of pushover men to which she will never feel complete with. Why? Because as I stated before, women subconsciously need strong men that can put her in her place when and if need be. In a loving and healthy way, of course. I understand that men naturally desire a woman that is submissive and nurturing. They want a woman that they can come home to and she somehow seems to make all his problems from the outside world melt away. So many men come to me saying that they need to be the leader of their household, but fail to take a look at what they must possess in order to achieve such a role. Men of the mo most of the men that are complaining about not having a woman to nurture them or be submissive to them in any way are not taking care of business as they should. Instead... They are struggling, unsure of who they are, lost, broken, and in many cases, looking for a woman to help them with finances and keep everything afloat. Homosexuals. This is a very weak-minded and this is a very weak mindset and position to be in, which is why they are more than likely finding themselves feeling unappreciated and passed over by the women that they would like to be with. The type of women that are going, the type of women that are going to be patient, loving, kind, submissive, nurturing, supportive, and understanding are going to need a man that can hold him down on his own. A man's ability to be a provider and protector shows that he is a true leader and stable, which is what is going to attract this kind of woman to you. A man showcasing that he is unstable, broken in all aspects of the world, and struggling horribly will do nothing but get passed up by the good quality woman that he is seeking every time. She will instead go after the man that may not be the richest, cutest, or even the most intelligent, but he does embody the leader, provider, and protector qualities that most women are needing from a man. Many men that I tell this to start saying things like all women are gold diggers, but this is not true. The truth of the matter is that women naturally look for men that are stable and that can provide for them. When a man does not understand this, most times he is the type of man that does not have his life together and does not want to put in the necessary work to take care of his household. He is instead looking for a woman to live off of or just wants to do enough to get by. This in and of itself is nine times out of ten why he is having difficulty finding a good mate that would indeed have no problem submitting to him and catering to him. The reality of the situation is he is not worth it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many men need to get on their grind and stop whining about having to be a man. A major part of being a man is being able to hold down your castle and keep everything in order and smooth sailing. Life is difficult for everyone, I know, but that should never be an excuse to slack off and complain about doing whatever is in your power to take care of your duties and obligations as a man, as long as it is done in a righteous way, of course. What men fail to realize is, at, is it makes him stick out amongst the rest when women see him working hard and making things happen regardless of the obstacles and, he, and is very much so attractive. 
Women love to see a man that is resilient and reliable, showcasing the fact that you don't mind working hard to make sure everything is going well for yourself and your family is a quality and a trait that majority of all women will respect and appreciate, making her not mind being nurturing and submissive to you. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum everything up, submission is not the enemy and is also not something that is freely given. It is a key ingredient to a healthy relationship between two people that truly love and respect one another. Submission is a key component in a dynamic where both parties understand how it is supposed to be used and should never be abused in any way. A woman should never use submission as something to hold over her man's head in order to get her way, and it should never be used by a man as a way to control and abuse his woman. Both parties must use submission in a healthy and caring way. When it comes to a healthy when it comes to healthy relationships and marriages, both the man and woman must view each other as the prize. Nobody is above or beneath the other. No one is more valuable or more deserving than the other. Both are uniquely beneficial and important. As long as everybody understands this, there should be no problems with being in harmony and balance within our relationships. Remember, submission is a great thing. It just has to be given in a relationship where the person is deserving. So, if you are in a healthy and loving relationship, give submission a try and watch magic happen. Closing. Men and women should both be bringing things of substance and value to the relationship. Having someone with morals, goals, values, and interests that coincide with you and what you stand for are a must. No woman should be getting into a relationship just because a man has money and power and no man should get into a relationship with a woman just because she is submissive and attractive. It must go deeper than that. A person's character, what they are about, what they stand for, how they treat you, and what they engage in should always reign supreme, although those other things are important. Too many times I see men and women get involved into relationships for surface level reasons or out of necessity and it always ends in disaster. So always look beyond just the surface when it comes to finding a person to build a healthy foundation and relationship with. I hope this book was able to give you much more clarity on balance within relationships, especially in regards to submission and how if used correctly can be a beautiful thing. Peace and much love. All right. So that is the end of the book, Submission is Not the Enemy, a key factor to a healthy relationship by Sister Danika Bell. Uh, she is D apostrophe Nika, N-I-E-K-A, Marie, um, on YouTube. You can check out some of her videos. Now, I know everybody doesn't agree with gender roles and, and the art of submission and all this and that, but for those of us that do, um, or at least open to it. I like how she broke it down. I liked how it kind of mimics the other book that I read, um, Complementarity. So mainly what I gather from it is that however your situation pans out, that you should complement each other, that there should be a balance of give and take. It shouldn't be just one person over the other dictating and dominating everything. Um, it shouldn't just be what one person says goes. You should be able to bend and, and um, not... What am I trying to say? You should be able to bounce things off each other. You should be open to suggestions. You should be open to what the other person has to say. And everything should not just go one person's way. Um, now, when it comes to the roles as far as who pays or whatever, I think that is definitely negotiable um, based on your relationship and how you and how you like to run it. But I can agree with, me personally, I can agree with how she was saying um, when certain men are not in a role like when men come into my life and they don't have nothing going for them um it's a little discouraging because it's like i put in a lot of hard work you know and so if i'm doing all these things keep i gotta do them with or without you regardless and i'm speaking on men that typically always ended up moving in with me um i already gotta do this stuff to take care of my household but if you're coming in and now you know you eating up extra amount of food uh, using extra amount of lights and water, especially if you're there all day while I'm not, my bills and stuff are going up. Like, there are things going... And if you're capable and you're just not... You're not using any of this opportunity. Because I was with a guy one time. He had PTSD. He used to be in the military, so he was getting a check. Um, and, you know, he felt like he just didn't want to work. And we had similar backgrounds and the type of work that we did. And I honored the fact that he wanted to kind of just stay home and regroup and get his life together until he figured out his next move. Because I have been in situations before where I, too, didn't want to work. Um, and I had people to support me in that. And then I still eventually had to end up go back 
um, to work and making income. But I honored, I honored that. I was submissive to this brother in that way. But he did not, he was not all the other things to me like she stated in the book. He wasn't trustworthy and all these other things. But anyways, he ended up utilizing that time to just uh, sell weed out the crib and be home all day. And wasn't. And he had a lot of strengths and abilities and, and gifts and talents about him. And he just chose not to really use them. Um, and so I did start to get resentful because I'm like, one, you got me um, acting like I'm your woman and in this submissive role. But you, there's no give and take. It's always about what you say um, and like your rules. But this is my apartment. And then you're you're barely contributing or you're not contributing on time. Um, like there would be some months where he wouldn't even give me a heads up that he didn't have the rent. Granted, I had it because I was still saving because again, I was already paying rent prior to him. So I was saving my other portion that I would have normally spent. But what if I hadn't, or what if I had used it for whatever else? And I was expecting his half of the rent, you know what I'm saying? So little stuff like that. Um, it did make me resentful and it turned me off and it's like, why the fuck am I doing all these things and yielding to what he wants and he doesn't do any of that back. And so that was a learning lesson, like she said, don't be giving in and being submissive to people that don't deserve it, that are obviously already showing you that they're not for you and they don't have your best interest in mind. So um, I really think that's all it boiled boil down to. And even people that have an issue with gender roles can um, see the value in not just one person leading a relationship, that it's a balance, that it's a partnership, that it's about complimenting one another, and that, um, you know, Sometimes you don't always get your way. Sometimes what the other person wants to do or thinks or, or um, can envision how something will play out to benefit you both. Sometimes you got to just fall back and let and let shit ride, let it ride. So I appreciated the book. I appreciate the good system. Probably go catch up on some of her YouTube videos. Actually, I'm about to get into some self-care and do a little dancing in the mirror in a little bit. So, yeah, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a good rest of y'all evening, and I will see y'all again soon. Peace, love, and light. Good night.